Hi, welcome back to another SQL application tutorial. So we're in an application series, which is about building applications using MySQL. We did part three already, and now we're moving on to part four. So in the previous videos, we've created some tables, and now we're about ready to connect those databases to the front end of our application. So the other parts that are coming up are going to help us do searches and to make more complex queries. And eventually we're going to get to the point where we have a fully functioning app. So if this is interesting to you, then let's keep right on going. My name is Shad Sluter and I teach software development and computer science at Grand Canyon University. So many of my students using these tutorials have become professional software developers. So congratulations on choosing a good path for a good job. I hope you have a great future. Now here is the application where we left it from the last video where we had a simple set of fake data. We had two albums in our data access object and they really don't relate to the database yet. However, they look like the albums that we put into the database, so we're getting closer. So by the time you're done here, you're going to see the application show all of the Beatles albums on the screen instead of these two fakies. All right, so let's go modify this data access object and make it work like it's supposed to. So we're going to delete all the junk that was already in our DAO and we're going to add some new things. So in this first step, we have to make a connection to our database. So every database has a username and password authentication or some kind of a way to make sure that the right people are looking at the database. And so ours is going to be very simple to start with. The first property that we put in is called the data source. So the data source is where does the server live? Now, if we were on the internet, we would put in some kind of an IP address or we would put in amazonaws.com or some detailed long name for a server. Since localhost is here, that means we're talking to the MAMP server. So remember, we have this uh, MAMP server running here and this thing is running on localhost. So we're, we're essentially doubling up our computer to do two things. One is the application and the other is the database server. In the real life, sometimes these are divided into separate machines. But anyway, we're using localhost for now. Next, we need to specify something called a port. So let's bring in the MAMP server again and check out to see where this might be. So let's go to MAMP and choose preferences. And let's see what else we can do. It says a bunch of stuff about PHP. What I'm interested in is ports. So in this tab here, we can see that there are ports. So 80 is currently this, the setting for my web server. And then 3306 is the port for our SQL database. So ports are, are just numbers that uh, computers agree to uh, communicate on. Like a, it's like a channel. It's like on your TV when you have channel 15.1 uh, and 15.2. It's like they're, the, the dot part is the sub channel or it's the port number for a major channel. So our port number here is 3306. Now we need to specify how to log in to this server. So username and password is what we need to provide. Now I know that the username and password for my particular MAMP installation is root and the password is root. Uh, if you're using USB web server or a WAMP, you might have something slightly different. So check the uh, help files or the installation guide if this doesn't work for you. So root and root works for MAMP. The last item on the list is telling it which database it needs to connect to. And as you might recall, the name is Music2. So just bringing up Music2 uh, is right here, just refreshing our memory of what we have for data. Now the way a data access object works is you create a bunch of methods that are going to perform actions for the main program. So the first action that I'm going to create is one that will get all of the albums from the database. So uh, the return type of this function is called a list of type album. And then uh, appropriate name for this would be get or fetch or search for all. So I'm going to name it as get all albums because I think that's the most clear. Now to make this work, I'm going to start by creating an empty list of albums. And then I'm going to return that list at the end of the function. So I'm going to rename the list as return these. So the next step is we're going to create a connection. So I'm going to type in something that will not work at the first. It's called my SQL connection and it's a new class so I will create a new class and one parameter in it is the connection string. Now why doesn't it work? Well by default Microsoft expects you to be talking to a SQL server. That's their version of SQL but we built this thing with MySQL so 
we have to go get a extra piece of software called a dependency to make this work. So let's see if the computer is able to help us out in our problem. So I'm going to hover here and it says, I have no idea what you're talking about. My SQL connection doesn't exist in my list of known classes. Let's see if there are potential fixes. So the first few fixes are you can generate this and create your own. However, you can see that there is a mysql.data or data uh, different dependency. So let's go ahead and choose this and it says I'm going to install this. So how is it going to do that? Let's go ahead and choose find the latest version and install it. Now I'm going to just sit and watch and magically something will happen and the problem disappeared. Where did the problem get resolved? Let's take a look at how that is resolved. So you can see that the error is gone. What I'm going to do is right click on the project go down to NuGet Packages. So Manage NuGet Packages is the dependency manager in SQL. And you can see that it says here I'm looking at installed packages and MySQL.data is already been installed and it comes from the Oracle Corporation. Now Oracle actually owns MySQL. They paid quite a bit of money for it and I guess owning free software is maybe a status symbol. Do they actually make any money on MySQL? They must somehow. I'm not quite sure how they do it. But anyway, they are the owners of MySQL and they manage this extra dependency that allows us to connect using uh, their classes here. So apparently it's working. I'm going to close the NuGet package manager. Now the next step that we're going to do is we're going to create an open connection. So I'm going to type in my connection and type dot open and that will log in to the server. Now there's going to be a whole bunch of more stuff coming up here. We're going to do a SQL statement and then we're going to execute it. But I want to first check to make sure that everything is connecting properly. So I'm going to skip some lines and then just type return and then the, the list called return these. So right now it's still an empty list, but it will not be an empty list for very long. Now I want to make sure that I can test this out. So I'm going back to form one in the code here and I'm going to start uh, removing all of the junk that we put in earlier. So I'm going to delete the majority of the junk that we put in earlier and just leave this binding source as the item. So I'm going to create a new instance of the albums uh, data access object. So we'll do albums DAO equals a new albums DAO. Now I want to associate the data source of this uh, grid with the event called get all albums. So I'm going to just erase the one piece of code here at the end on the right and change it to get all albums. Now remember, get all albums is still returning an empty list, but it will try to connect to the server. Let's, let's just run this and see if there are any errors. Okay, the application's up and running. Let's go ahead and choose get all albums. And uh, it returned an empty list, you can see. It must have, it must have connected correctly. Let's, let's try to break that and see if there's a problem uh, that we can resolve later. So I'm going to go in and change something. So localhost, I could change any one of these details. So localhost X, or I could put in the wrong port number, or I could put in the wrong username. Any one of those will cause this to break. So I'm going to put an X in for the server name and then try it again. So now when I choose load albums, uh, what happens? Um, there, I finally get an error. Something's coming up here and what is it? It says no such host is known. So you may have gotten a different error based on whether you changed the password or the port number, but this is telling me that the open connection did not work. And so the program stopped. So that's one way to test to see if you got the right connection string or not. All right, let's fix that. So I want it to actually work. Now we're gonna finish off with this get all albums. So the next item down is where we're going to write the SQL statement. So I'm going to create a new, um, a new instance of a, an object called a MySQL command. So I'll name it as command. The values that we're going to create when we do the instantiation is two parts. First is the string, which is the actual SQL statement. So we're going to say select star from the albums table. And then we have to provide a comma and then the connection uh, that we defined earlier. Next we're going to use a using statement. So this using statement is kind of like a while loop. It says use this object and then when it's done with a the loop then destroy the object. So what I want to do is create uh, something called a, a MySQL data reader. And this reader will be the result of executing the command that we defined up on line 25. 
So this reader then can be used in a loop to be able to fetch each line. Now we're going to go through each column in the data table and we're going to associate it with a new property in a class. So we're going to make a new album. I'll name it A. And for each of the properties, we're going to go through the column names. So ID is going to be equal to the reader dot get. And we want to get the right type of value. So this is going to be an integer. So integer 32 is the size of the uh, data. You could use other integer types like 16. But 32 seems to work. So we're going to say at position 0, expect to see an integer. The next item is the album name or the title. So that is coming from reader.getString at the second column, which is item number 1. And then so on. We go down to the artist name and the year and the image URL and then finally the description. Notice that the index number goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So there are five numbers for six columns of data. And we have to match up the data type accordingly. Otherwise, the program won't work. After we have the new album called A, we want to add it to our list. So return these dot add is the command that will attach this as another item in our re search results. Now to clean up after ourselves, we want to close the connection. So SQL might be smart enough to close the connection for us, but it's always supposed to be here. So after you're done querying, do connection dot close. So this time we should be able to run the app and instead of getting just empty data, we might see something. Let's go ahead and try it out. Okay, the app is up and running. Let's see uh, what happens when I choose Get Load Albums. Okay, and there they are. So I got lucky and everything worked out fine. Now I'm going to create an error just to see if we can do some troubleshooting. So let's close this. And let's say I changed one of these things instead of a 5, I put a 6. What would that do? What kind of an error do you suppose that would make? It probably won't work, but let's see why. Let's go ahead and choose Run This. And now it says here, you have specified an invalid column ordinal. So in other words, I only had up to five and you chose six. So that one here is, I suppose that's in English. <laughs> Sometimes computer errors are hard to understand. Let's say instead of uh, get int, I accidentally put in get uh, string. So let's see what get string will do for us. So what kind of an error will that do? So get string, it not, it's not even going to let me. It says an ID is not a string. Here's a really common thing. So let's say I make a mistake in my SQL statement. So instead of albums, I put in the word album. And let's see if that makes a difference. Let's run that. So now I got the application running and I choose go. And we got an issue. It says here an exception. It says table music 2.album doesn't exist. So if you do a typo in this statement right here, things aren't going to go well either. So albums is the name. Another good practice in writing SQL statements is not to rely on the star for selecting all items from the table. This will make your code more uh, rigid, you might say, or more, uh, more specific, but it will also avoid error. So if I ch change the star to ID, album, artist, and year, and all the rest of them, it should still work the same if I've typed those correctly. So I'm going to try it again, run the app, and when I choose Get Albums, uh, I've got a problem. It says here the problem is that there is no such thing as image URL. Um, what is the image URL supposed to be? So let's bring that up here. It is uh, image name. Okay, so that's what it is. Let's fix that. Okay, so image name should work. Let's try to run it again and see what happens this time. Okay, here we go. Load Albums. And this time they all seem to work like they're supposed to. So we've got ourselves a working select statement. We've got the first section done of our application. Now it would be kind of nice to be able to search. Like right now I'm getting all of the albums. How do I do a search so that I can only get some albums of the ones that I'm interested in? Well, that's exactly what we'll do in the next video. We'll do a select statement using the where clause. So that way we can do searches on our collection.